before you can install the Cooler Master Hyper 2 and 2 Evo into your motherboard. Make sure to put in your CPU first. And the first step is to secure the backplate. And this is what the backplate looks like. Now we're going to install it in, into an AMD system, but if you're going to install an, an Intel system, all the difference would be is the, uh, the type of, the which side of the motherboard, the motherboard backplate you're going to use. If you're going to use the AMD backplate, you will use these four holes, one, two, three, and four. So you will use uh, the, the back of the motherboard will touch this side right here. If you're going to install it on an Intel system, the back of the motherboard will touch these four ends right here. So you can see if you have a socket 775, 1135, 1156, and a 1366, it will go through these holes. And uh, take on these, As you can see there's a little black area there. Just for uh, just a buffer in between your uh, motherboard's PCB and the metal part of the screw, you basically just uh, push this in to the back, and you use these to secure it in place first. And once you do that, you will use these one of these bolts to secure each one. There's a four total until they're fully secured. And I'm just going to show you what it looks like in the back once you secure it. And then before that, we will proceed with the installation in the front. All right, this is what the back plate looks like. And to secure it completely, all you need to do is to lock it with these bolts. And Cooler Master actually provided this adapter right here for your screwdriver. So you can just uh, use your screwdriver to lock them in place or unlock them when you need to uninstall it. Now make sure they're completely snug and uh, Maybe you need a, to hold it on the other side while you secure this side with screws and they, they don't until they don't completely move. Because once you, you screw in your heat sink onto the other side, it could, uh, if you didn't secure this area properly, it will move around and, and uh, it could rotate out of lock and it, your back plate will not be completely secured. So make sure you do that. And now we'll go back to the uh, left side panel and uh, let's look at the installation of the Hyper 212 EVO itself. Once you have the CPU backplate installed and securely in place, you have to apply a thermal interface material. Now, depending on the type of thermal interface material that you use, and uh, make sure to follow the instructions that are, that are included with it. For example, we use the Noctua NTH1 uh, thermal interface material on all our CPU cooler testings, and we only need to apply a small um, pea-sized application of the paste right in the middle and uh, the pressure in between once we uh, put it into our flat area of our CPU cooler flat base and in the top flat area of the CPU the thermal interface material will spread out evenly and uh, make sure to take out the fan first before you install the heatsink in place Hyper 212 Evo and uh, we are going to use this. And also make sure to take out, I took out the RAM as well since we are going to sneak this in between uh, to install it. And uh, through that we just make sure to align it once it is inside your CPU, rather your CPU cooler like that. You just uh, adjust it to match the top of your, uh, to match the mounting area of your screws. So it will look like this and then you screw it in place. That's why we need to remove the fan first so you need to, you can secure uh, all the screws in place. And uh, when you do that, make sure to screw it and secure it in a crisscross fashion, like so. And uh, don't, screw it, don't screw it completely on one side and then move on to the next. Do it uh, about 50% or quarter percent from one uh, corner to the opposite and then move again the same way because uh, you don't want to apply too much pressure on one side and it will warp, it could warp your CPU or your uh, motherboard. And just for health reasons of your system, it's better to, better to secure it in a crisscross fashion. And uh, we're going to do that. I'm going to install the Hyper 212 EVO now inside the system and uh, let's check back once it's installed. As you can see, the thermal interface material uh, does not go inside the grooves because there's a lot, uh, a lot, a lot less areas there for the thermal thermal interface material to sneak into compared to the Hyper 212 Plus. So it's a lot more flat and more evenly distributed.
once we have the Hyper 212 Evo in place, we can now put back the fan and uh, make sure that it's in a push configuration. And uh, just simply slide it and uh, see the little locks right there. It will fit inside uh, these grooves. And if you, you can also add a, a pull fan here on the back and you just basically screw in your 120 millimeter fan into these plastic brackets that are provided. There's a, an extra pair so you can install one. Uh, this is the included fan. It's a 120 millimeter fan. And you just basically slide it in place. And then take the four pin PWM fan and plug it into your CPU fan connector. And now we are going to test the Hyper 212 Evo and compare it to our benchmarks that we found on the Hyper 212 Plus and see how well this new fan and the new flattened copper heat pipes affect the performance.